So I'm on question number nine of uh, chapter five web assign assignment. And they're asking about uninsured people and they're giving us a percentage. They're telling us the sample size and the results. So what kind of probability do we use? Is it a chapter four kind of probability or is it chapter five probability? Of course, this is chapter five. So that's kind of a, a giveaway, I guess. But what if it weren't? What if it was mixed up in like an exam say? So what you wanna do is you wanna check, well, let's see, let's just, I suspect it's, it's normal because you're asking us for mean standard deviation. So let's not normal, so such as binomial. So because they're asking us for a mean and a standard deviation. And then, so if we look to make sure it meets the conditions, uh, are there fixed number trials? There sure are, 200 people. Are the results independent from trial to trial? Whether I have insurance doesn't affect whether you have insurance. So as long as we see that these are adults from different households, um, then yeah, I would say that's a safe bet that the results are independent. Um, each trial has two outcomes, two categories. Yes, you have insurance. No, you don't. So that passes. And then the probability of success remains the same from trial to trial. So is the probability that I have insurance 19.8% and for you the same? Well, maybe not just looking at us too, but in 200 people, yeah, I bet that's, that's pretty much not going to change, you know, in the long, in the long run. As long as that's accurate, we we're assuming it is. So, um, yeah, so that, that's the way it passes everything to be a binomial distribution. So, because it can be a bi, we can call it a binomial distribution, we can find those specialized calculations to calculate the mean and the standard deviation of them. They're right here on page 76 of the textbook. So, the mean is the sample size times the probability of success. And the standard deviation is that same number, C n times P. Then you just multiply it by one minus the the probability, get that product, take the square root. So what I did earlier on my first iteration on this on this problem is I grabbed my calculator and I said 0.198. It said that's the 98, 19.8% times the sample size. And I got I got 39.6. So that would be this answer here. Then to get the standard deviation, I just did that same, I got that same number, and then times by one minus 0.198. Now you could certainly on your phone, I mean, if you're, sometimes I, and many of you have iPhones, and I know from the my students at Oxbow, uh, th their phones are kind of, uh, what you gotta do, let me clear this out, what you gotta do is sometimes work backwards when you have parentheses. So I'm gonna do the one minus 0.198 first, then I'm going to times that by the point, point 0.198. And then I'm going to times that by 200. And then I got to take the square root of this. Now, your phone probably has a square root button. This has a square root button here, second, enter. And I can either type that in or get the answer. Um, this calculator lets me go out and grab an old value. And that's the standard deviation. Now they say it around to two decimal places, I think. So uh, let's see, what do they say it around to? I mean, the mean is easy because that that's just that just has one decimal place. But this wants two decimal. No, sorry, one decimal place. So they're going to look for five point three or five point six. Okay. Then they're asking us to find the z score. So the, remember the z score we did in chapter two and. We take the value we're interested in minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So if I do that on my calculator, let me clear this out so we can see it better. So I'm gonna do 30 minus 39.6. And remember, you wanna hit equals at this point, otherwise, or either you gotta use parentheses around that subtraction or do the subtraction, press equals, and then divide that by the by the standard deviation. And uh, I think we're okay. I wrote down three decimal places. So that should get me accurate enough to make WebAssign happy. So that's the z-score negative. Now they say round to two decimal places. So we're gonna make that negative 1.7. Negative 1.7 zero is what we'll type in though. It shouldn't matter if we add the zero. Okay, and then the last question was, is it unusual? 
is that only getting 30 people or 15% out of a sample of 200 unusual if, if there's 98% of the adults um, are uninsured. And because this is, because that Z score is not negative two or beyond, we can't say, remember two standard deviations either side of the mean can denote an unusual result or an outlier say. Um, and in this case it's not because it's not negative two or, or smaller. So we would say, no, it's not an outlier or it's not an unusual result. Very, very possible to get that as a, as a, as a possibility. We could kind of pull this into, well, while I'm at it, why don't, why don't I talk about that? Um, let me get, uh, if I can go back out to that David Lane uh, calculator. I mean, I can probably get the graph on my uh, phone, on my, on my graphing calculator, but it's not as slick and easy. Um, See, what's the mean? The mean is, uh, let me grab my ink, 30, uh, 39.6. And the standard deviation was about 5.6. I need some coffee, just, just so you know, 5.6. Oops. 5.6. And I want to know below, 50, no, was it below 30? And there's that probability. You see the way it kicks out uh, the tap. You've, I've, you've seen this before, or maybe, or maybe you went through it so quickly you didn't catch it. Do you see how this marks out the nice 68, 95, 99.7 rule numbers? Uh, have we used David Lane yet? Well, this is where you're going to go in chapter chapter six, folks. First part of chapter six. So I guess it's okay that I'm blending it. Just you have, I guess you haven't you haven't seen the normal curve per se. Um, you have seen the 68, 95, 99 plus everyone in chapter two. So, but I digress. Uh, uh, pretty small probability, right? Remember, five percent's the cutoff. Oh, look at that. So that would be if we went with probability method, it would be considered unusual. Um, but, but, and we assume a normal curve. Uh, I think it's just so happens we can, but that's, that's another, another, about another, another day, a lesson for another day. But the Z score is not two standard deviations away from the mean. So you can see there's the two standard deviation mark. So it's not there yet. 30, 30, 30 didn't, didn't get there. So that's how we answer that question. And I guess I should stop this video before I put people's grades up. Give me a yell if you need some help.